Layoffs, layoffs, and more layoffs. That is what we are seeing in the spring of 2022 in the U.S. economy. And these layoffs are a early warning sign of broader economic problems. They're going to hit the U.S. economy and the housing market later this year. Data from Crunchbase is showing a massive increase in the amount of companies announcing a layoff. Take a look at this, folks. According to their data, 42 large companies in America, both public and private, announced a layoff in April 2022. Well above the levels we've typically seen in the previous year. Such a sudden spike in the number of companies announcing a layoff is very alarming, especially in combination with the issues that we've been seeing in the stock market since the start of 2022. Year to date, the S&P 500 is down 14% from its highs of January 1st, whereas the NASDAQ, which tracks the technology sector, is down by 22%. And this stock market crash, to go along with the surge in layoffs that we've seen, which I'm going to explain more about in this video. These are two early warning indicators telling you all that the U.S. economy is not healthy right now. Despite the fact that the job market seems like it's good and the unemployment rate is low, there are problems brewing beneath the surface that are going to come out over the next 3, 6, and 12 months and lead to, in my opinion, a recession later this year as well as a housing crash. And what it all really comes down to, everyone, is this, that the U.S. economy is shifting from a period where growth was the number one priority that was most of the last 10 years companies just focused on growth over making money. Well, going forward, profitability is going to be the main concern rather than growth. And it's this shift from growth to profitability, which is causing this spike in layoffs. It's going to lead to a lot more layoffs going forward. For instance, Netflix is probably the most popular example of a company that just laid off a lot of workers. This article from the LA Times is titled, Layoffs at Netflix Have Some Staffers Questioning Company Strategy and Culture. And what you all need to understand is that Netflix Netflix just lost 200,000 subscribers in the first quarter of 2022. They're losing money. Their stock price is down by 70%, and now they're laying off workers. But before this, Netflix had earned a reputation for generous compensation packages and a willingness to outspend rivals, growing its staff aggressively during the pandemic by 20% in 2021. But their recent struggles in terms of their stock price and subscriber loss have been an ego check on the company and its employees. Now they're under Wall Street's microscope, and the era of freewheeling is coming to an end. But this is not just a Netflix problem. This is a problem we're going to see across the U.S. economy because the era that we're walking into of higher inflation and higher interest rates is going to be damaging for everyone to some degree, but it's going to be especially damaging to industries and sectors and cities that are not profitable. And what's astounding is that a lot of America's economic growth over the last 10 years has been on the backs of companies that lose money. Right now, 44% of all the companies on the NASDAQ lose money. 67% of all the companies in the San Francisco metro area lose money. 57% of all the companies in Boston and Seattle lose money. And for the last 10 years, losing money has been okay. We've had an artificially low interest rate regime. The cost of debt has been cheap. And a lot of people have been wanting to invest in growth companies, thinking that they're going to be on the ground floor of the next Tesla or the next Amazon and earn a 1,000% return. Except there's a problem, and that's that everyone at the same time wanted to invest into the next Amazon or Tesla, the next growth story. And this has resulted in 2022 in a bloated, absolutely massive bubble in the technology space in America that is now crashing down. And we're seeing the early signs of that with the layoffs at Netflix, as well as the layoffs at a company like Robinhood. Robinhood is a fintech company that started an app and a website that allows people to easily trade stocks and crypto. They boom during the pandemic. Well, that boom is over. Their stock is down by 80% and they just had to lay off nearly 10% of their full-time employees. According to Robinhood CEO Vlad Tenev, over the last two years during the pandemic, it was a period of hyper growth accelerated by factors including lockdowns, low interest rates, and fiscal stimulus. During that time, they increased their headcount by 6x from 700 employees to 3,800 employees. But unfortunately, with growing that fast, Robinhood ended up hiring too many people and had a lot of duplicate roles and job functions. As a result, the CEO goes on to say, we determined that making these employment reductions to Robinhood staff is the right decision to improve efficiency, increase our velocity, and ensure that we are responsive to the changing needs of our customers. And so Robinhood is the same story as 
Netflix. We grew too fast during the pandemic, and now our core business is suffering, and we're having to lay off workers. And this, of course, is going to have a disproportionately negative impact on the local economy in the Bay Area where Robinhood is headquartered, as well as any city where they expanded operations, like a Charlotte, North Carolina, is an area where Robinhood was supposed to expand to, but now they're not. And what you all need to understand, everyone, is that this is just the start, unfortunately, of the layoff train, of the economic contraction train, of the housing crash that's gonna take hold in the cities that are most exposed to these money-losing tech companies. Because the bubble in this space is massive. And one way to get a sense of how big the bubble is, is to look at the amount of venture capital dollars that were raised by tech startups in America over time. And you can see that in 2021, there was nearly $300 billion raised by tech startups, the vast majority of whom lose money. That was more than double the amount they raised in 2020 and nearly 5X the amount they raised in 2016. And a vast majority of this money was raised in San Francisco, Go, New York, Boston, San Jose, Los Angeles, Seattle, and San Diego. And this is going to be very dangerous for these cities because what I want you guys to think about is that when you know a tech startup raises money or a tech startup like Robinhood goes public and raises even more money, that's a massive injection of wealth into the city where these companies are based. It means huge increases in the value of the stock options of the employees at these companies. It means huge increases in pay. It means net worth going from like 200K to 2 million for a lot of people who live in these cities, which of course then juices consumer spending in the local economy as well as juices the housing market. And no surprise folks, the housing markets in America that are most expensive for the local home buyer where home prices are at the highest multiple of local wages and earnings are, all on the West Coast, primarily in tech-driven markets. That's how you get a situation like in Seattle where the typical price of a home of 772,000 is more than 10 times how much the average worker makes. Or in San Francisco, where the average price of a home of 1.4 million is more than 17 times more than the average worker makes. Or in Denver, Colorado, where it's 10X. And generally speaking, the prices of homes should not be able to be that much higher than how much locals earn. But in these tech-driven cities, they are because a large share of the home buyers work for tech companies that import wealth from investors and then pay that wealth out to their employees through bonuses, stock options, and higher salaries, and thus enabling their employees to create a housing bubble in cities like Seattle, San Francisco, Denver, Austin, Salt Lake, Boise, Reno, basically any city with a tangential connection to technology where the technology space is the driver of the local economy. These are the cities that are most at risk for an economic and a housing crash in 2022. I believe that this next recession is not gonna be evenly distributed across America. It's not gonna be evenly distributed across social and economic classes. It's gonna be heavily concentrated in tech dominated cities where there's a lot of wealthy people earning a lot of money for companies that lose money. And now that America has shifted from an economy that was predicated over the last 10 years on growth to one that is now predicated on profit, that's a big problem for the entire tech Ponzi scheme that I have discussed in this video. Now, one thing I wanna leave you guys with before signing off is a prediction, and that's a prediction about when we're actually gonna see these initial layoffs turn into like big job losses, kind of like a recessionary level of job losses. And the important thing to remember is that right now we're still early on in this process. While we've seen a big increase in announced layoffs, we actually haven't seen yet a big increase in unemployment claims. You can see on this graph, of weekly unemployment claims in US history that the level right now of around 175,000, 180,000 per week is actually at the lowest level that we have seen in 50 years. So on the surface, the job market still appears strong. However, I don't think it's gonna stay strong. I think in the next three to six months, we're gonna see the layoffs turn into big increases in unemployment claims. That's because a big correction in the stock market like we've seen in the last four months tends to lead, tends to be a leading indicator of when jobs are lost. For instance, back in the dot-com bubble of 2000, we saw a peak in the stock market in the S&P 500 in August 2000. And then we saw about a 15% decline through the end of the year in December 2000. You can see that the blue line unemployment claims for the month hadn't really trended up by that much yet. However, in the subsequent months in early 2001 through the summer of 2001 is then really when we saw 
unemployment claims spike about six months after we saw the initial correction in the S&P 500 in late 2000. A similar situation played out in the financial crisis in the late 2000s. The S&P 500 peaked in October 2000 and then went down by about 15% over the next six months through March 08. Unemployment claims, the blue line were still fairly low at this point, but it was about six months later by the end of the year, November 2008, when those unemployment claims really surged. So I think that says we are going to see a pretty big increase in the amount of layoffs and unemployment claims in America beyond what we've already seen by the summer. July and August is when I think we're really going to start to see this economic pain roll out. Of course, I'm going to be tracking all this data week by week, month by month to see if my prediction of a summer job market slowdown in America is correct. And so if you want to follow along and get the insight and data before anyone else, make sure you're a subscriber to this channel, hit the subscribe button, turn those subscribe notifications on, and also just make sure to do two things for me, everyone. Number one is smash that like button. Hitting the like button is the best way you can support this channel and show your interest in the video. Additionally, also make sure to comment below. I want to hear what you're seeing in the local economy and the housing market you live in, as well as your job market. Do you see things shifting? Are people getting laid off? What are you seeing out there? Do you think we'll have a recession by the end of the year? Leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts.